This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Twas the month of December, and all through the net came a demon that was born from blood, tears, and sweat. Yes, in this time of the year of the holidays and snow, today on the Demonic Compendium, we're talking about Jiboko. And I know what you're thinking, a rhyming episode? Oh, wow. Well, it turns out that rhyming is hard, so I'm gonna stop now. The Jiboku is a monster born from Japanese mythology, specifically referred to as a yokai. They are born from trees that grow on battlefields, execution grounds, pretty much any place where a lot of people were killed. They absorb blood that was shed and mixed in with the soil. Once a tree absorbs enough blood, they officially become a Jiboko, gain sentience, and take hold of passing humans to drain them of their blood. So essentially, vampire trees. Other qualities of the Jiboku that are if you cut one of these living trees, they will bleed in the same way that a human would. And if you do manage to break off one of its branches, they actually possess incredible healing properties, which is potentially reflected in their game appearances, as Jiboku frequently has healing magic. Jiboko's compendium entry from Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzunoha vs. King Abaddon, says that it is an evil tree that thrives in death grounds such as battlefields or execution sites. Those who pass by are caught by its branches and their blood is sucked out for its nourishment. But there's one important thing to note about the Jiboko's mythology and that's that it might not be mythological at all. A famous Japanese historian slash manga artist by the name of Shigeru Mizuki was most famous for storytelling involving yokai, especially for his manga series Gegege no Kitaro, as well as the Yokai Encyclopedia. And it's been proven that he often used a mix of yokai actually documented in older Japanese texts and ones he just made up for his own stories. Shigeru Mizuki was known to be fairly secretive about his sources when it came to the information he got for his stories and his yokai encyclopedia, but several yokai experts have surmised that the Jiboku story was one he fabricated. Though it was potentially inspired by elements of similar yokai like the Kodama, who are known tree spirits, and the Tsukumogami, an inanimate object that gains life after 100 years. Design-wise, there isn't too much to say about Jiboko. As a yokai born from trees, it naturally looks like a tree, with the red leaves seen in its design being a very common physical element throughout their various depictions. The skeletons stuffed inside of its trunk do a nice job of conveying its murderous nature as one who feeds on humans to stay alive, with a couple added touches from Kazuma Kaneko to personify the demon's overall design. As you can tell from the branches, they curl at the end to resemble hands and fingers, and mixed in amongst its trunk are eyes and a mouth that give off an expression of, hey, what you looking at? In game history, Jiboko is a fairly unique demon in that it has pretty much been exclusive to a single series, the Devil Summoner series. Having never appeared in a Shin Megami Tensei game, Persona, Devil Survivor, nor does it even have some off-the-wall cartoony Devil Children design. The closest thing Jiboku has to a non-Devil Summoner appearance was in Shin Megami Tensei Trading Card Card Summoner for the Game Boy Color, which despite having one of the largest rosters of demons in the entire franchise, it's a game I don't really talk about much probably because I don't actually know anything about it. The main character's name is Yuji. In the original Devil Summoner and Devil Summoner Soul Hackers, Jiboku appeared as a member of the Wood Race, but when it came to the Raido games, Soulless Army and King Abaddon, Jiboku is categorized as part of the Frost Order, which is why I wanted to talk about him this holiday season. Get it? Cause it's a frost tree? Frost tree. In Raido Kuzunoha vs. the Soulless Army, should players perform all these steps to unlock the secret boss fight against Alice, Jiboku appears in the battle as one of her minions. Jiboku has a couple of small roles in Raido Kuzunoha vs. King Abaddon. For starters, if Raido brings a Lilum with him in battle against a Jiboku, the two will initiate a special conversation, which is weird and sexual and kind of hilariously awkward to watch. Lilum's charms are a bit too much for the old man and he'll end up running away. Jiboku is also needed to complete case file 2-7, I'm Collecting Demons. The client for this case file is named Kid Summoner Shigeru, possibly as a reference to the Jiboku's creator, Shigeru Mizuki, who requests Raido fuse a Jiboku for him. Raido simply has to hand the Jiboku over, the quest is finished, and Shigeru rewards players with two aquamarines for their troubles. And so there you have it, Jiboku, the blood-draining branches of the battlefield whose bark is just as bad as its bite. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time.
but be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.